Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is about Sony's DWI SO3D in an LS2 and a sound device 833. Let's look how it works. Before we start, you have to take care that your SO3D is on the latest firmware update, how to do it link is in the description. Also for the sound device 833 there is an update coming in January 2021 and it gives you ability to control this receiver. And I have to say thank you to Ambient in Munich. The company gives me the 833 and the LS6 for one week so I could do the test and the video. Thank you very much. Okay but now let's start with sliding in this thing if you're a sound device uh, user, then you know how to handle this mixer. I have here the Sony B30 body pack transmitter and the receiver, the SO3D. And before we start, let's check the firmware in the sound device mixer. That's 7.4, that is okay. And then of course you have to switch on the expansion port if the LS2 is connected. And let's slide in the receiver. I use the Sony Aerials here, but of course on the SL2 you can switch on some phantom power and power external antennas with an amplifier. Let's switch on the receiver. Okay, receiver is switched on, everything is there, we see the two channels, and now we go into the menu and go to super slot menu you will see the receiver with the two channels we use at the moment let's go to channel b2 but before we do this we go into the options and see what we can change here we don't need antenna power we have passive aerials um, we go onto the attention on minus 12 because i have some heavy noise here from a lot of usb and other products on my desk uh, we use the narrow band 470 640 that's exactly what the receiver can handle the 144 megahertz uh, the rest is not needed. I would use the RF history about 120 seconds, it's not bad, to see on the last two minutes what happens on the RF side. Um, go in, in the channel B2, and then we see what's set up at the moment. Normally you will see here the audio bar graph on top, and then we have the antenna symbol, so it's working. We have ant using antenna A, 6.6 MHz. Quality level is the raw data rate of the data stream so it shows you when the system has lost some data and error correction starts working cross remote that's the symbol for cross remote here uh, it's not connected at the moment no battery um, visibility because the transmitter is off group channel tv channel and so on so let's do a clear channel scan You can see the scan here, it scans in 125 kilohertz, TV channel 38, I use this, that's a typical UK setup, but it works in all other frequency ranges and groups the receiver has at the same moment. The receiver has 144 megahertz bandwidth, we have two versions, high and, high and low, 470 to 714 megahertz. Okay, that's the frequency we can use. Um, it shows you the noise level in dB microvolt starting by zero, going up, and the highest is would show to you 20 dB microvolt. If it's higher, the Sony receiver will not show it as a clear channel. You can still use it if you like, but it doesn't show as a clear channel. So let's go to one of the channels which are free to use. I don't know how much it is. It doesn't say me how many frequencies have found. So this is a scan in group zero zero, which is the TV channel 38 in 124 kilohertz depth. Don't like to group Zero, 00, which is the TV channel in 125 kilohertz steps. You can choose one of the Sony pre-programmed groups, which are always work fine together. So um, go to this page here. That's the first page uh, for the RX2, receiver 2. Press the set button for two seconds. And now you can change to another group. Let's say we use group D11 which is a group which has 375 kilohertz steps. Choose the first frequency if we do now a clear channel scan. It will use the frequencies from this group and only scans the frequency in this group. So it shows us here 
what we can use. I think that's all um, 18 channels or 21 channels we can use. And uh, yeah, let's use one and step in and say, yeah, we like to use this and it changes the receiver. If you like to do it on the receiver, you can go in, change band and so on, but you can also set the frequency directly. So you can go in here, go to frequency input, press the set button for two seconds. And now you can choose digit for digit with the plus and minus buttons, the frequency you like to use. This is one of the functions with the latest software version, a directly frequency input. So I'll go to the next one, change it, and you are ready. Um, so let's go to the TX options. Nothing available because transmitter is not switched on. And we have the receiver options where we can change the, the main block. We have here 21, 29, 30, 38. Um, that's the two main blocks you can use. We use here 30, 38 with the TV channel 38. And then it's uh, you want to have the display on, 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 off. You can use the brightness and the codec mode. The system has one codec in four different modes. Mode one is the mode we use since 2008. So any transmitter in mode one will be compatible to all receivers we have produced since the last 12 years. Mode two was coming up some years ago with the lower latency, is only 1.5 milliseconds analog into analog out. Has a uh, bad audio signal. It's um, 24 bit 96 kilohertz against mode one, which is 24 bit 48 kilohertz AD conversion. Then we have the mode three, which has a little bit longer latency, but gives you more time for error correction. So this is the mode where you may be outside bad error situation. You are on the street, you are in a football stadium, on sports, uh, wherever, where, where we have massive power in the air. You don't receive a better signal, but the receiver has more time to do a better error correction. So it's doing a read Salomon error correction. So it can rebuild the original signal. It's not an error masking, what you normally do. So you miss a package and you just fill in this package by random data. No, it is in mode three, uh, read Salomon error correction, which rebuilds the signal from the original and the random density data in the stream. And then we have mode four, is the latest mode Sony has developed. This mode is even better in the 10 to 20 kilohertz frequency range, is what I would say the high-end mode with the best audio quality. Is there a difference? Yes, you can hear mode one and mode two and mode three, there are small differences. But mode four is the best one if you're doing opera or musicals or something, then mode four is the mode for you. Going back, and now, we will switch on the transmitter here. One of the advantage of the system is that you have a remote which can control from the sound device mixer over the receiver features on the transmitter side. Before you can do this, you have to pair the receiver with the transmitter. It's a process where both get noticed from each other and it's on 2.4 gigahertz with the antenna behind the screen here. So what you do is, switch off the receiver you like to use, press the minus button, switch it on, and it says scanning. And you do the same thing on the transmitter, switch it off, press the minus button, and switch it on, and then it says scanning. And now the receiver says, I have found this transmitter. You press the set button, and you took over, and the receiver is reading out the data from the transmitter. And now you see here, the pairing symbol is switched on, and it shows you the strengths of the signal in the 2.4 area. Audio is working, it changes the frequency from the receiver as the master in the transmitter. So you get directly a working system. The codec has changed and the transmission frequency, so both devices can talk to each other. Yeah, it's on two milliwatt, it shows you full battery, that's the RF we have. And now we have some control on the TX options. So, I can switch the transmitter in sleep mode. See, it's off. The 2.4 is still on, so it gives a connection between the receiver and the transmitter, but it has no audio and no error transmitted. So this gives privacy to your artist, uh, to your protagonist, and it saves 
from my point of view, around 30-35% of battery. Back, make it active, and it switches on. 48 volt power, no, the body pack don't have 48 volt phantom power, but you can lock the power button, the set button, the power and the set button. So if you do this, then you see here is a lock symbol in the display and it shows that everything is locked. So nobody can go around and play with the transmitter. You can change, of course, the attenuation, most important, and you can change it in 3 dB steps, and this is attenuation. 0 dB has the highest sensitivity, and then you switch in 3 dB of damping into the signal flow, and you see it works in sync with the transmitter. Let's go back to 0. You can change the low cut. Let's go to whatever. It goes up to 200 hertz. Um, it's a soft filter, it's not very hard. So go whatever you want. And you can change the output power. Going from 2 milliwatt to 10 milliwatt or to 25. And of course, if I go to 25, you see the LED of the antenna um, is lighting up because I overdrive the input of the antenna now. Go back to 10 which is better, go back to 2 and the LEDs are off. Sync band group and channel. So now I can sync again the frequency I have chosen and sync codec mode, uh, which means I can sync the mode I have chosen before. How to do this? Go back, go back to Eric's options and here you can change the codec mode. Let's go to mode 2. It's not changed now. You go back to the TX and you say sync codec mode. And now it changed the codec and you see the audio is available again. If you want to change the frequency directly, you can go in, press the button, and now you can change to another frequency. First the the steps in the 500 megahertz here and then the steps here. So that is something like a frequency, directly frequency input. Of course, we have lost the transmitter, but the remote is still in work. So I can go to TX options and sync group and channel. And here we are, the receiver is Back. And here you have it, the combination Sony DWR SO3D DWX series receiver with an SL2 and the sound device 833. Of course, this works also with the LS6 and the 866 and the Scorpio mixer. In the SL2, you have on the back side two extra mini XLR AS inputs. You can use an adapter like this one here, which gives you um, ability for another slot with two XLRs, which gives you analog or digital signal out. And then you can connect to the SL2. This is one with the big XLR, but you can get also um, a version with the mini XLR. And then you can get up to eight channels. Of course, channel four to eight will be not controllable from the sound device menu, but you can control the transmitters with the buttons on top of the receiver. That's also working fine. The remote is, from my point of view, a fantastic feature, especially in times of COVID where you don't want to touch anyone. You can change parameters if the transmitter is in a range of, let's say, 10 meters around you. So comfort zone, it doesn't cover the whole range of the UHF, but if you leave the range, then in the metadata of the audio stream is everything in, name, battery status, and so on. That's all fine. You see all the information. If the transmitter is coming back in range of the 2.4 cross remote, then it will be booked in automatically and you can change parameters. Give it a try, check it. And as always, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like the video, thumbs down, that's fine. Write me in the description what you like, subscribe to the channels, and thanks for watching.